Coming back in seven, six, five, four, three. Tons of energy coming back at a commercial break. Hey now, 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 I go, I go all day. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm going to let this play a little bit. Because you know what today is? Today is one of my favorite days of the entire year. Today is Mardi Gras. If you don't believe me, listen to this music and check out this one picture. That's right, folks. Yep. They do it right down there in Brazil for Carnival, which is here in the States, Mardi Gras. So happy Mardi Gras, everyone. Um, I think the timing of stuff, only because my Mardi Gras video is a lot longer. I had to work on that first. So that will probably be up first. And then this video will probably be up uh, six-ish. Um, yeah, today. Because today is Mardi Gras. Look at that. It's, it's, it's 12.18 a.m. So yeah, that means today is officially Tuesday. It's Fat Tuesday. I gotta work, though, tomorrow. I have to work today. Can't get, I can't start drinking yet. That's not a good thing. Oh, well. So, wait a second. I'm not here to talk about any of that garbage stuff. Although I would like to see some... Chicks in leopard print bikinis. Oh, if you guys only see what I'm seeing. Show up to work tomorrow. That old 90s height waist cut bikini. French cut thong. Brazilian V-string thing. So amazing looking. But yeah, I'm not here to talk about that, unfortunately. I am here to talk about some pro wrestling. So you know what? I do have some thank yous to give out. So let's... Away, away, Ali Ali Day. Way, away, Ali Ali Way. There we go. You've seen enough of my thing. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, Cabbage Patch Time. Yeah, that's about it. But yeah, same. So many. So that's good, though. Oh, wow. That actually sounds pretty good on that side. So rare. Uh, so might as well close that. My computer's doing 100 things at once. But yes, I'm here. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tommy, you know? I don't know. The only shirt I could find on the floor right now is my friendo shirt. I have been working nearly nonstop, I think, since Christmas. So yeah. Yeah, that's right, because the day after Christmas was the 26th. I have so much stuff to do around the house. I'm just happy the Christmas lights are down. I do have to put Christmas dishes away. I should clean the floor up. Yeah. Stuff to do, but we'll see what happens once I leave my job. Or I get suspended and quit. I think it's going to might be one of those deals. Like, you can't fire me because I quit. But yeah, that's okay. Let's talk about some Raw. And you know what? You can't talk about Raw tonight without some thank yous. Dave Tron. You, sir, are very calculating. And you win one match twice because you get that six count.
Thankfully, I put your name first. Robin in the hood. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. Nicholas back. They're just chilling out there with their briefcase boombox. See Starfish. Four. You've been on this list a lot. You know what? It's probably about time you saw Nikki Cross take it all off. And finally, Pontius. Yes. Some of us are old enough to remember when Craigslist had personals. You, sir. I don't know. I remember now. Buzz, briefcase, A, B, C. You just won by Dirty Pen. That's all the thank yous. So again, if you'd like to join that list, or if you just watched the Daytona Beach Bumfight League, and now I won't give away any spoilers yet. But yeah, the two major belt changes. I could not believe that. Actually, there were three major belt changes. I really can't believe one of them, though. He's never won that belt. He's tried. Oh, well. You know what? Let's get straight to some raw talk. Starts off with a little sit down. I guess it's a Kevin Owens show. And Seth Rollins is there. Um, so we had the Alpha Academy and Seth Rollins. Yeah, they just talked for a while. And this leads, of course, to the match between the Alpha Academy and Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. Otis starts off. Otis is just a big, powerful, clubbering guy. Because he just rains down clubbing blows and a big slam on... Both Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. Uh, Kevin Owens did like kind of botch a senton. He did like a, a spinny leg drop. Made up for it right after. It's like, yeah, I don't want to break the rhythm. I'll do the sen hit the senton. That, that way I know where we are. Uh, Otis then just threw Seth to the outside. Yeah, that, that was kind of cool. Because normally Seth does like to use that barricade to his advantage. Now it's being used against him. Good job, Otis. Uh, Chad again, Chad Gable comes in, amazing wrestler. I'll tell you what, I'd want to see him and Dolph Ziggler have a shoot wrestling match for about four minutes. Give them a ten minute match, first four minutes, shoot collegiate style. That's what they need to do. So Chad Gable comes in, he works over the arm of Seth for some reason. Otis, he tags Otis back in, good fast tags. I don't know, this is weird because they did the heel and the heel tag team and then they did a face and face tag team and then they had they had a, a, a turn too which we'll get to later 
and a belt change on Raw. Indeed. And we shall get to all that shortly. Oh yeah, in a bit. <laughs> I could be long-winded about these videos. And I'll tell you what's going on. Yeah, this week for the most part. So I've, I've made one executive decision based on a lot of factors. And I don't know, you guys may or may not be happy with it, but oh well. Tough, as they say. Where was I? Oh yeah, Seth eventually does get the hot tag. Takes out Otis. Hits Chad Gable with a Falcon Arrow. Um, however, Otis hits the Vader. The, uh, Otis and Chad Gable make their comeback. Otis hits a Vader bomb. Chad follows up with a Moonsault. I love good chain wrestling. Uh, Seth had to break that up. I thought, whoa, they're going to have them win? Good, show them strong. Not happening. Um, eventually, then Seth and KO made their big comeback. Chain wrestling run. Uh, Pop-up. There's a pop-up buckle bomb, and then a stunner, and then the, the curb stomp. Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens wins. They get some momentum going into whatever Monday Night Raw or pay-per-view. I don't even know what pay-per-view there is in March. I don't even know if there is a pay-per-view in March. Out there in YouTube land, let me know if there's a pay-per-view in March, because guess what? I won't be seeing it anyway. And I'll talk about that later. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. I can't complain about this match. Surf and turf match. Uh, then a little, uh, little Omos uh, interview there. Yeah, that didn't take long. Um, well, next match, we have Omos versus T-Bar. I'm sorry, Donovan Dijak. It's not my fault that they're booking like this. At least you're still in the WWE, and they're just probably... At this point, just throwing money at you, saying, please stay. Although you never know with Vince. Yeah, o Omos just, just literally KO'd T-Bar uh, to the outside. Like, he, he couldn't even get in the ring. He turned around, whap, that was the end of that. <laughs> T-Bar got hit twice, once by Omos, once by the barricade. And he gets back in. T-Bar tried. He tried to hit a few shots. Yeah, it didn't do anything. He just upset the big guy, Omos, a little bit more. Omos had a clothesline, then that kind of double-handed choke slam. And yeah, that was the end of that. And there goes my camera because my computer trained to do way too much, as usual. Omos wins. He kind of knew he was going to win. I do like the way they, they built him as this unstoppable force a little bit. Um, they do have him going against different people. The squash match. Say ham sandwich match. Then we have Nikki Cross and Dewdrop are giving a promo. Um, yeah. I don't even care about uh, Nikki Glenn Cross. I'm not calling her Nikki A.S.H. I think this is the point <laughs> where we had the discussion... Which one of the women were the cutest? And I think by default, came up to be probably a tie between Nikki, Cro Nikki Glenn Cross, and Liv Morgan. I'll get into that. Because this sets up for the women's tri uh, triple threat, uh, women's trios tag team. Women's trios match. I forget what WWE calls it. Let's go by my lucha terminology. The trios match. It was Nikki Cross, Nikki Glenn Cross, Dude Drop, and Becky Lynch taking on Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, and Bianca Belair. Rhea Ripley did get in the thing, but I disqualify her because she has all those piercings, and she has a tongue piercing. Even though we did see a little her, her boobs get kicked out of her top, I should give her some more credit for that than I should. But yeah, nah. Again, t like you, I. People always say, oh, this is a deal break. We always say, this is a deal breaker for me. You know what my deal breaker is? Tongue rings. I almost bit a woman's tongue off because I felt a piece of metal hit my precious teeth. I like my chiclets. See these? These are, for the most, these are all natural. Oh, maybe it's some, some metal in them. But yeah, these are natural. Metal hitting teeth is unnatural. 
Putting metal in teeth uh, is a necessity. But yeah, back to the wrestling match. Uh, Dewdrop just shoves Liv. <laughs> There's like nothing. Again, in my eyes, Nikki Cross is probably the cutest one there. I might as well get into this now. Dewdrop's a little bit on the chunky side for me. Not necessarily bad, not necessarily my thing. Becky Lynch was the other extreme. This is like, this is like the Goldilocks. Dewdrop's too big. Becky Lynch is too small. Nikki Cross, Nikki Glenn Cross is just right. Then on the other side, again, I'm not a fan of seeing women's musculature or bone structure. Even though Bianca looks healthier, I mean, you can see, you can still see her abs. And you can still see kind of the pelvic outline. Even though Bianca is cute, the answer is no. And the hair is just like, no, no, no. Rhea Ripley's Australian. That already gives her some brownie points. But she has too many piercings, especially, I think, a tongue piercing. No. Nope. Liv Morgan's blonde. I've never had good luck with blondes. Therefore, for me, the process of elimination, the cutest one there is Nikki Glenn Cross. But yeah, um, let me get back to the wrestling now. So yeah, uh, Becky goes to the outside, pulls up, pulls out Bianca Belair, knowing a tag. Then Liv just starts diving on people, and then eventually everyone starts diving, going through ropes and shoving people out. So everyone to the outside. Um, a lot of schmozzing going on inside the schmozzing. That almost sounds sturdy. But yeah, it was just a big mess. The referee had absolutely no control. Bianca Belair then then whipped. And this is hilarious. Bianca Belair used her obviously fake hair extensions as a whip. And when it struck Becky Lynch, it sounded like a kendo stick. I'm like, wait a second. A whip doesn't make that noise. A hair's not going to make that noise. Yeah, that was weird. And then... Becky, I think Becky shoved a Sharpie up her top. I'll have to check out the replay, see if there's any Sharpie-type object hiding in Becky Lynch's outfit. And, and I think Becky Lynch did the oddest blade job to her ribs. Because I don't care what you say. Human hair is just way too light. You can't get it to physically go fast enough. Unless it's obviously fake. And even then, fake hair is still relatively light. I mean, I think Becky... Because the two marks look literally like... like um, wide Sharpie or lipstick. The other one looked like lipstick or Sharpie with a cut in it. I think Becky did the blade job there on her own ribs. But yeah, that was... It, it honestly sounded like a kendo stick. Way too clear for TV. And I think if, even if you were live at the show, it might make some noise, but not like kendo stick hitting like shoulder blade or head. Yeah, that's not happening. But yeah, I honestly forget. I just... Becky left. I live. Rhea and Bianca won the match. I forget how. It was a night of roll ups. They probably rolled up someone. Becky sharpied and bladed herself the hard way. I don't know. Again, I heard that and I'm like, huh? Ham sandwich of a match. Then we had. Glorious Robert Roode taking on Tommaso Ciampa. It's good to see Ciampa and um, Ciampa and Roode. They trade fists for a while. Not really yay boos. Ciampa would get in a little flurry, then Roode would get in a little flurry of his own. Um, Ciampa then not, went outside, knocked the hat off of Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. Roode still has, as far as I'm concerned, in all of wrestling history, the second best spine buster. I mean, Arn Anderson has best spine buster. Robert Roode's second best spine buster. 
I think someone in AEW has a third best spine buster. I think. I think. I think maybe Serena Deep has a good spine buster. It's been a while since I've seen her wrestle. I haven't been able to watch Friday nights for a while because one, well, one was my, it was some guy's birthday. I wonder, I, I mean, I wonder whose birthday it was. I mean, really? So, yeah, I, I was not watching that one night because I had to go attend some guy's, I don't know, some random guy's birthday party. Or, or at least try to have a birthday party. But, yeah, um, I don't know. Then I'm in closing, and then I had Speed Week. So, yeah, like that Friday of Speed Week, I just came home, shoveled food in my face, and went to sleep. <laughs> that's... that's Literally what I do when I work speedily. It's not even eating. It's just like, I need protein and system. And then sleep. Uh, but yeah, Rude again, great spine buster. Dolph eventually eats a knee. And then Ciampa, a um, little bit more action in the ring. Ciampa counters a glorious DDT. It was just a roll-up. Kind of underwhelming. A good enough match. I can't complain about it. I mean, at least they're not burying Tommaso Ciampa. Cheeseburger match. Then we had Dana Brooke and Reggie taking on Tizawa and Tamina. I don't even know where to start with this hot pile of garbage. Some writer is getting shoveled money to write this stuff. I'll give credit to Dana Brooke. She, she's, she, she's working with it. To me, it looks like she's going to strangle someone. Because I was just happy to be on TV. And Rudy's just, just too new to care. Uh, so Dana and Tamina start off. Dana hit a meh satellite DDT. And Tamina literally had to throw herself into the corner so that Dana could miss on her handspring elbow. Instead, Tamina just hit a series of elbows and tags in Tazawa. And then Reggie has to jump in. Reggie just does a bunch of parkour stuff, not even wrestling. Um, again, the only thing they did, they did some like weird. Uh, he did like <laughs> he did what one person in, in Discord called the tea bag flip onto the Tazawa. Dana Brooke makes that with Reggie again. We shall see a live sex celebration on TV yet again sometime. Maybe next week, but I'll oh, get to that later too. Um, yeah, then Tazawa kisses Tamina. I, I don't know. Yeah, this whole thing, I don't know, it was a piece of toast. I don't even know where to begin with that stuff, folks. Um... Then there was the Street Profits. And they, they cut a little promo. Then we have the Mysterios versus the Hurt Business. This had some potential. Sheldon Benjamin is a lot stronger than Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio is a lot agile. But remember, Cedric Alexander is also agile and lurking out there on the outside. As he nailed Rey with a great clothesline that dropped Rey right to the apron. Uh, Sheldon has a big slam. And then, ooch! That was a rough-looking power slam that Dominic ate. That did not look pretty. It did not have that full rotation. It looked like Dominic almost, if he didn't have his head tucked in, look into Shelton's belly. He, he could have had a concussion easily because that looked, he looks like it almost hit him, almost like he landed on his head and then rolled to his back. That, ooch. Shelton's normally a lot better than that, though, too. It depends. He might be used... To, I mean, you could do a lot of flippy stuff with Ray. Dominic is a little bit bigger. Um, Dominic could not hit the 619. He tried to dive outside. He got caught. Uh, Miz interferes. He pulls Dominic from, from doing something. Ray chases the Miz out of there. So Ray's, Ray's out. Shelton eventually wins with a roll-up victory. The Hurt Business win, which I kind of like. Um... The Miz interfering was okay. It sets up things. Even though Logan Paul is really the wrong partner. Should be Cody Rhodes. Or Stardust. Oh, wow. That's going to be so terrible. 
Um, a good enough match. Cheeseburger match. And we had Arcade Bro versus the Street Profits. Classic wrestling star. Um, Ford gets caught in a triangle by uh, Matt Riddle. Uh, he tags in his partner Randy Orton. Just stomps and stomps and stomps him. There was like a weird finish. So I'm going to downgrade this match because I don't know what the heck happened. Yeah. Um, Orton hit a bunch of stomps. They all, uh, there was no flo there was no assisted floating bro. Uh, Dawkins got his knees up. Um, Ford got his knees up. Dawkins gets his hot tag. And he starts dropping fists left and right. He had a big looking clothesline. Eventually after a while, Orton gets the hot tag. Hit a great, again, Orton's so good at that spinning power slam. That was good. Hit a great DDT. Ford hit a splash. And something happened to Randy, because Randy just, like, I think from the replay, Ford, like, literally landed on Randy's chest, where it should have been, like, lower across the gut. Ford gets air. That's simple physics, folks. Folks, Force equals mass times acceleration. If you have to fall this, if you're supposed to fall this distance, but fall from this distance, you're just going faster. That's called gra acceleration due to gravity. And then if you fall the wrong way, he was grabbing his chest and like the ref just like said, okay, that's it. He's done. And I'm like, huh? What, what, what happened? That was so weird. Only because I don't know what happened. I hate to do this to Randy Orton. It's a ham sandwich match. Then there was Alina's Lena Vega and, and Carmella thing. Carmella teases of, of what of what her and Corey do at their apartment. And that they're going to relive that on Raw. It sounds like a live sex celebration. I don't know. Carmella does have big boobies. So we'll find out. Let's see if we can wrap this up in two minutes. Uh, then we have our... Oh yeah, I can definitely do that. We have Finn Balor. Taking on Damian Priest for the U.S. title. Uh, start start with that classic tie-up. We'll test the strength there. Uh, Finn puts on a headlock. Finn that has an arm bar. And because Finn is the much shorter individual, he has to stop. He has to pressure the knee to get a little leverage with that. I do like the fact that Finn Balor is becoming a little bit of the rock and roller because you know he's a real rock and roller for life because he's too sweet <laughs> yep um uh, finn shows he shows his own strength well stomps then he flies uh priest has has a great spinning backbreaker though then he does the ear clap finn he does a corner drop kick could not hit the stomp priest did the south of heaven he's like a choke big choke slam uh, Finn eventually countered, I think, he did that drop elbow, that elbow drop from whatever, I don't know, ridiculously named move it is, the crossroads, whatever, Sister Abigail, that, that Damien Priest does with a lot more impact because he is taller. And, uh-oh, something beeped at me. That's ah, okay. I think this video is still going a little bit. Oh, that was probably the camera. But yeah, um, the sli uh, yeah the, the that the shotgun drop kick, the coup de gras, Finn Balor becomes U.S. champion. He is now a triple crown winning champion. That's really cool to see. Priest he has his heel turn. I am the bad guy. Then he does a razor's edge to Finn on the table, and we have. I am the table. I am the table. I am the table. The table did not break. I don't know. And that, that led us to our final segment. We get this in, hopefully, before the 30-minute mark. Um, we had Edge cuts a promo. He wants to fight someone. AJ Styles steps up. AJ Styles and Edge go at it for a while. Edge hits a concerto. 
edge. Also hit a nut shot too. So yeah. AJ Styles, you need to wear a cup to wrestling. And that was actually a fairly entertaining for the oh the Finn Balor Damian Priest match. You know what? I liked it. Surf and turf match. I'll tell you what, for the most part, it was a solid Raw. So I got two more minutes left before this video conks out on me. Um, the rest of this week. So tomorrow there's probably going to be at least two videos coming up at a normal human hour. One video, probably either Wednesday, probably Wednesday morning-ish. I'll be NXT because I'll be watching NXT tomorrow. Wednesday I'll be doing the AEW Dynamite review. Because I refuse to go to Daly's Place anymore. Daly's Place is a dump. Boo Daly's Place. I just don't feel like going there. Even though the parking is free. I know they said the worst stadium. The worst collegiate stadiums. The one here for Bethune-Cookman here in Daytona Beach. Daly's Place is, is pretty close though. For being an auditorium. The cheap plastic... Stadium seats, the stadium leaks, it's concrete. So when it, it has that very damp smell, that kind of concrete does develop. And it's expensive as anything to buy stuff there. It sucks. Um, so boo Daly's place. That place is a dump. I refuse to go there anymore. Um, Thursday I'll be doing probably two videos. So I'll be doing my normal impact video and then I'm going to do a predictions video for I know the AWS or pay-per-view on the 6th and I think impact is doing something on Saturday I think I'll find out for you folks if not I'll be doing a review for AW's show and I don't know how much of the AW show I'm actually going to catch I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I might do a review. F I don't know. We'll see what on my work, work schedule. Um, Saturday I'm off. Sunday, I may or may not be watching AEW. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I do apologize for this video getting out. Uh, uh, whatever. It's out there for a public viewing ship. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Bye. I wish I could start the bottle now. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm still recording. No, yeah, I, I have to go to sleep. I have to be responsible and go to work tomorrow. Bye. I wonder if a woman gives the guy's beads if we're supposed to drop her pants. I don't know if. Guys give women beads, they take their tops off. Yeah, it must be true with women. So women give guys beads, I gotta drop my pants at work. That should be interesting. Oh, wait, you didn't hear that. Go away, bye. Uh, but like, share, and comment, subscribe.